Right, here we go, guys, for Group C. There were no Group A matches, simply due, in fact, to, uh... Nope, nobody's submitting the replays. You guys, you gotta get your replays in. Anyway, spawning into the bottom right-hand corner. The blue tarred pieces. He goes by the name of Azo. Hmm. And in the top left-hand corner. The yellow tarred pieces. He goes by the name of ZZXBX. I do believe his actual name is Zoller. I have to confirm that real quick. Just for... All intended purposes. Yep. It is a diesel. We do have a bit of a TVT changing up from one mirror match to another. And that's the weirdest thing ever. I'm sitting here watching my bitrate and it like spikes. It'll go from uh, like 4K down to like one and then up to like 10,000 and uh, it's it's so weird it's like my upload is not there at all and I have it set for a 3800 which is like just at that 720 60 and then 1080 30 so it's really weird how that works anyway so we're gonna go ahead and wall off we do have an SCV making his way across the map here which is also very very interesting because we do have another SCV making his way back home both players is over here trying to get a scout. We do have a Reaper opening for Azo. Now this is something I kind of disagree with on this map because there's no way for a Reaper to get into the main base. It, it, that's the sole purpose of the Reaper in the early stages of this matchup. Is you know just get in there and scout around and see what your opponent is up to. Now if you open up with a Marine, that's you know that's exactly what you need to be doing because you just you're able to deny that Reaper scout so easily. I mean, we do have a factory follow-up on both sides of the map. One SCV going down on both sides of the map here. And if I knew exactly what was going on with the bit right here, it, this wouldn't be a problem. Reactor going to go ahead and start up here for Azo on his barracks. Now he should transition to some Cyclone play after that. We do have Cyclones being built one at a time for ZZX on the opposite side of the map here. Now, again, this is exactly what I'm talking about, about this Reaper not being able to get the ramp. I mean, he's going to have to walk up this ramp. And he walks right through his doom to three Marines. Kind of a missed micro. He might have been able to get that Reaper out of there. But again, it's just a matter of like, it's just not going to get you anywhere if you have to walk up that ramp with a Reaper. You just won't be able to get the actual scout you need to. So that being said, your best bet is honestly, like you said, just to start some Marines. Like CZX is done. And get some Cyclones out. Otherwise, honestly, this kind of pressure right here would just barely be enough to, to do quite a bit of damage. Now, ZZX here is going to go ahead and expand on the low ground. Azo did start his expansion on the high ground. His expansion is good, still going to have to float down there, which does kind of equal out the timing on when these naturals will be up and running. But this aggression coming out right here might actually be just enough, you know, to kind of push over the edge. It just depends on the micro of these two units. The one extra marine kind of bruised here, but here we might start to poke. Looks like he's just going to back off. I mean, all in all, I kind of like that decision just to back up. You know, you saw the army, you're like, yeah, that's a pretty equal army. There's no reason for me to really try to pressure this and, you know, to get rid of his army and lose mine. So, you know, I might as well expand. Get my starport started up here. And from there, you know, we just kind of go into a macro game of TVT. Which honestly, in some cases, does get kind of weird. We do have the tank production started up for, his, for ZZX. A reactor on the starport means he will be able to go ahead and start pumping out the medevacs or the vikings, depending on what he decides to go for. Now, air control and TVT is everything, guys. So, like, if you don't have the Viking count to control the skies, your tanks are going to be in a tight position because you're going to have to force out scans or sacrifice medevacs in order to get the vision for your tanks on the low ground or on the ground to get that splash damage off that they usually need to do against marines. 
you know, to be able to take on the tanks as well of your opponent. Now, Azo has no idea that tank production has actually started. Which is going to be kind of a kicker here for him when he walks up this ramp. It seems that there is a tank sitting up here. There's a tank and Cyclone with the Marines here. There should be more than enough to actually power through this army. Especially with Cyclones being as brittle as they are. A couple more barracks being added on back home for Azo. On the opposite side of the map, we do have one more being added on. We do have a medevac as well for, for ZZX. Total of three tanks out so far. It looks like he's going to load up and go for a drop. I, this might actually be a bit of a kicker here if you do, for doing this. Cyclone is in trouble now. He can honestly just walk right in here and snipe out this tank and get right on top of it. Once that tank falls, there's honestly nothing here to defend on the low ground. As these Cyclones, these Marines, will be able to just chew right through this army here. And force the lift off on the natural. He's trying to keep his SCVs alive. But guys, this is doing economic damage. This is something ZZX can't be affording right now. And this drop going across the map is going to have to do a lot to get him back into this. A tank on the high ground is going to go ahead and you know, clean up the last his army, but... Kind of a sketchy move. And this Liberator in the main base here for Azo also getting a little bit more... 12 kills on this Liberator. <sighs> Man, that Liberator Operator is on fire. Not literally, but you know. And he's still picking off more. Now he's going to be able to get it here. He pick off the... Oh, he's flying it right over to Marines. That Liberator was living the dream, man. Getting all those kills. Now, Azo or ZZX is kind of in a fungal here. He he's, looks like he's kind of like trying to get himself back together after that aggression. Azo is not done yet. He's going to go ahead and push out across the map once again. Knowing his opponent doesn't have much to defend at all as he's trying to get his economy back up and running. Uh, once again, a tank going to be positioned on the low ground. The drop on the other side of the map was cleaned up. We really didn't get too much done at all. For his, his ZZX anyway. Honestly, Azo can kind of just sit back for a little bit here and, you know, macro up. He does have his third base down and running, or being built. So he is going to enjoy a three base economy before he pushes it out again. But now again, if you wait too long, guys, I mean, TVT is a game that once when you're behind, you're generally pretty far behind. Even though you have mules, you got to remember, your opponent also has mules. Which means, you're behind. <laughs> You know, this situation, it's like, this is generally why in my TVT games, if I know I'm in this situation, I'll go for that Hail Mary play. Because if I can get, like, a ghost nuke off, you know, just, just walk in there and nuke the army or nuke a mineral line somewhere, I've dealt damage. And that damage is going to have to be repaired by your uh, your Terran opponent, honestly, before he can really move out across the map. Now, Azo is going to go ahead and throw down the scan here. Or, you know, ZZX is going to scan. See that there is an army here of Azo. And honestly, the army supply is kind of catching up pretty quickly. ZZX is also getting his plus one combat shields out. He does have plus one attack as well for his marines. He's also getting his combat shield finished up here. Stim is on the way with 1-1 one, one for Azo on the opposite side of the map. This medevac is going to get caught here and get picked off by this viking. Now, it's only a matter of time before we see Azo go, yep, okay, I got my upgrades. Let's go ahead and walk across the map. Because honestly, TVT, that's generally what you do. You want to be the aggressor player. And if you have more than your opponent when you're being the aggressor player, you generally just kind of overpower him. But again, both players just kind of macroing up, going into that uh, standoff moment here. Like, I won't hit you if you don't hit me. Let's just play a macro game and be a happy family. We're both Terrans, man. We, we know we want to go to that late game, get that tank count up, you know. See some battle cruisers flying around. But with that, it's, you know, it's a macro game. As I say that, it does look like Azo is going to go ahead and get ready to move out here with 1-1 one, one being done. And stem as well. He does also have a fourth base on the way. 
And Azo having that early aggression, he's going to be able to, you know, put himself in a really good position here just to play on macro game should he choose to do that. He does have an army on the way, so he is going to be able to get his 2-2. Now, on the opposite side of the map, we have another factory coming into play. This is going to be able to start to crank out that tank production for his EZX, which is honestly what he kind of needs right now. He needs a good bit of splash damage to deal with this army of Azo. Hold of all, we do have a drop coming out. This is a bit of a doom drop, honestly. He's making its way around to the back to the main base. And this is one of those plays that if you can get it off, you will find yourself sitting pretty in a TVT. But again, it's also a matter of he needs to get this damage done. He needs to do damage with this drop to be able to pull himself back into this match. Otherwise, Azo is still just going to be able to macro up and run away with this game even more. Scans being thrown down everywhere to figure out exactly where the army is at, figure out exactly what is going on. Even Azo scanning the other side. He knows that there is no third for his opponent. Sensor tower is going to be up. But here we go to boost in. As this comes in here, he's going to unload in a very good position here. He needs to siege that tank up. There you go. Good job with the siege up there. Marines coming forward here, trying to deal with the tank. They are going to walk right through this choke point here. A lot of these Marines are going to walk right into a, you know, the choke point of the tank. But the concave is just more than enough to clean this up. And that is pretty much just going to clean up this drop. Now, that being said... No real damage was done there. Again, that's that's resources lost for Azo, and it looks like or not Azo, but C, or ZZX and Azo just he's just gonna F2 and A click, man. I mean, he's got the tech for it, he's got the army, he's got the resource for it. He's in a position where he's almost double his opponent. So he will be able to just go ahead and move out across the map. But again, ZZX is very tucked in here. He does need to start a third base. And he probably should have done it with that aggression, or you know that drop he just did. But again, he's again, just not making that decision to do so. It means he does kind of throw away some resources, meaning he does kind of seal his own fate here. Third base is going to get started on the low ground. And the suns, the scans coming down, you know, blinding everything with their Circles of Doom. As Azo is just going to move in here and siege up. Now, you don't want to fight through the choke, Azo. It's the way you lose a lot of your Marines, mate. There we go. The tanks are siege up. Me, they will start to siege, shell away at this army, shell away at these bases. Okay, now we're kind of in that standoff situation where tanks really can't move up without actually you know, sacrificing or taking a hit. Now we'll say the one thing ZZX does have in his favor right now is that Viking count. But Z uh, Azo here can just go ahead and use some of these medevacs to, you know, for that aerial vision that he does need. Sneaky command center starting up just outside the range here. Now he could very easily just pick up and honestly drop on top of his army, but he does have the army supply for that. But doing that is also very risky because you can lose quite a bit. And again, the Viking count is everything right now for ZZX. It's something Azo just does not have. He does have plus two ground weapons on the way and plus three or three three for his marines. But outside that, he just doesn't have the air control that he does need in his TBT. There we go. ZZX is going to decide to move out. He's even pulling some SCVs saying, wait, let me come with you. I'm going to go ahead and knock down these rocks here. Before he does go ahead and move out now. Azo is going up to a fifth base. There is a planetary, but that will end up falling very, very easily here to the siege tanks. Which is going to have to force Azo to reposition his entire army here to defend. I like this, this idea. He's trying to bait the army of Azo out here. That's a long way to have to run back with your Terran army. 
Especially at the stem back, because you're going to hurt your own units with no medivacs to heal that army back up. Which are just kind of awkwardly hanging up back here. All in all, this is honestly a pretty good game. I mean, sure it's TVT. And this is kind of what happens in TVT, guys. I mean, this is this is what you see. ZZ actually still just needs to get caught up in the base count, get his economy up and rolling. That's where he's really lacking. 44 SUVs, not where you want to be at this point in the game. But Azo, who is maxed out right now, it's doesn't really know what to do. I mean, if he moves out and loses his entire army, it's going to be hard pressed for him to have to rebuild that army. But I imagine he's just going to wait for 3 3 to finish up before he moves out. We go. We do have the doom drop on the way. He's just trying to load everything up into these medevacs. You know, this doom drop might not be the best idea because if this happens, ZZX might just be able to move in here and honestly base trade. Oh, and these armies might get caught in the medevacs. The Vikings will see it to boost out and immediately boost out. One medevac will end up falling, and ZZX is on, making a run back home now, and with no medevacs to pick that army up and fly it back. This is going to be a long haul for these marines to get back, and again, he's going to try and stem to catch these, but to boost them back, he's just going to boost right in here into the main and immediately unload this army. Tank's going to get siege up, and this doom drop might actually end up getting cleaned up. I mean, he does have tanks on the high ground, but this is way too much here for Azo. Too much blue and not enough yellow. He's sending his tank marines away. I mean, you're already oppressed in there. You might as well just go ahead and clean up the tanks. But just like that, the tanks do finally get end up getting cleaned up. Lass's army is really not trying to defend. I mean, he's going to lose his main base, but his main base was completely mined, or mined out. But what the big thing was there he lost was production. The tanks of Azo not joining in the rest of this fight here is kind of a kicker. He didn't need these tanks in the fight. But just like that, Azo can just go ahead and start to remax. And not having any production or production here for ZZX means he's very much all in. He has to move out here or defend at least one of these two bases before he can really just, you know, take control of this game again. Actually, at this point in time, it's not going to happen. We got these tanks are just going to get lifted out of here. The damage has been done. All the supply depots were killed off. A whopping 30 supply to the name of ZZ. Who is just frantically rebuilding his supply depot. Let's go ahead and start some barracks now. So like I said, he did lose all his production. And he is going to go ahead and move out. Now, he was trying to catch some of this army of Azo. That would have been a good win had he been on point there and watched that. But at this point in time, eight, 20 minutes into the game, army supplies are actually even. That, that's something I kind of wasn't expecting to see at 20 minutes in. But Three more starports and a fusion core are on the way. So, we will see that battle cruiser transition coming out of Azo here. As ZZX, it just needs to find some damage. He needs to at least win one good fight while he macros up back home to really start to climb back into this game. But, you know, when all these battle cruisers start to show up, it's not going to be a very good day for our Yellow Terran. All in all, I mean, he is finding some damage here. He does kill the third base of Azo. Now, Azo is going to be in a position where he's not going to have to defend. So, it, this is actually really turning into a really good TVT, all in all. But in the end, I imagine Azo is going to be come out the winner here. He's going to go into that plus one air. Star ports are done. The tech labs are being added on. And he's got more than enough in the bank here to just start cranking up the battle cruisers. But it is a matter of time. I mean, he does need the time for his tech labs to finish up. For those flying fort bases to actually start to build. 
Yes, I called them flying bases because that's basically what they are, is flying bases. They cost more than a command center. 400, 300 gas, 400 mineral. I mean, Azo is supporting a nice gold base over here as well, so... I mean, this is basically it for ZZX. If he can't, like, finish his opponent off before these battle cruisers hit, there's absolutely no way he's going to be able to climb back in there. Hey, hey, barracks. Ah, hey, barracks. Get to work. Go build marines, please. Anyway, so ZZX is going to have to rotate back around here. You know, try to find another angle to push in here. He does know his opponent has to be on at least one or two more bases. And finding that gold base down here in the south would be a huge kicker for Azo. Because, you know, that, that's one of his last mining bases. His mains mined out. His third his pocket expo is mined out. His natural's all mined out. Azo does scan, or ZZX does scan and finds that there is a gold base down here. He has to assume. I mean, come on, man. It's, it's the only logical explanation for what's going on. Japan is expanding to the south. We do have four battle cruisers on the production tab. Now, battle cruisers do take quite a bit to build. So it's going to take a little bit before they are out and operational. Here we go. These tanks are going to siege up and stem forward from these marines. This Please don't send these marines into there. That's the worst thing you can do. The battle cruisers are here, so now you will be able to go ahead and take this fight and start to clean up these lovely, lovely tanks on the lot ground here. And this should be the last fight we actually see. Coming out here for Azo and ZZX. Pew, 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 says the battle cruisers. As these two tanks awkwardly just not able to shoot up. Azo! Go! Hey. Hey, man. Hello, sir. I mean, you basically just won this game. Why are you waiting? I guess he's just trying to max out, but what are you going to max out on? More battle cruisers? I mean, sure, why not? I guess he's just trying to macro up a little bit. I'm, I'm really confused as why he's just waiting right now. He's basically already won this game. He just basically has to a click the map at this point and it's over. His tanks and marines are not going to be able to stand up against tanks and battle cruisers. The only anti air you have at that point is tanks. And he's basically just letting his opponent get right back into this game. As scans are being thrown down everywhere by either, it's exactly what his opponent has. I mean. He has to be shaking his head right now after he sees that because it, think about it, you just you basically killed your opponent's production, right? You just killed the last of his army. Now you're letting him rebuild that army and rebuild all his production, and now you're just kind of you know putting more pressure on yourself than needs to be there. Okay, now that he is indeed once again maxed out, he should just go ahead and move out across the map. That's exactly what ZZX wants to do. He wants to go ahead and move out. Now, Marines don't really fare well against battle cruisers. So as this fight it does happen, I mean he's just being way too passive here. Okay, he does decide to load up into his medevacs and move across the map. A lot of his army supply is in these medevacs. Not literally in them, but like as the medevacs themselves. And this is kind of an awkward situation. Your opponent just pushed back out across the map. Well, you wanted to move out. We do have a warp and a battle of the cruisers across the map here. Now, this is going to force ZZX to have to run all the way back home to defend. This does open up the door for Azo to kind of play a multi-game, a multitasking game here. As he does push out here with the rest of his army. These battle cruisers are indeed getting quite a bit of damage done. Vikings on command move being picked off. Love how all these tanks are made. 
They really didn't need tanks. And GG, that's just going to be it. It's just going to take game number one off a 25 minute game. I kind of got my wish. It's exactly 25 minutes. Let me pause that audio. I'm going to grab a drink. Talk about one hell of a game there. Hopefully game number two isn't the same way. And here we go guys for game number two. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner of the center to Iyer. Currently up 1-0 in this best of three. He is a blue tear in pieces. Azo. Azo? 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 I'll call him Azo. And his opponent in the top left hand corner. He goes by the name of ZZXBX. Or Zuller. The yellow tear in pieces. Now, Zuller got to pull something out of his hat here after, uh, that lovely game he just played of TVT. Both players gonna go ahead and get that Reaper expansion going. Now, the Reaper can get into the base on the Ascension to Iron a little bit easier than it can on Neon Violet. Which does mean you might see a little bit of Reaper shenanigans. Both players do have their barracks on the way. Do have a wall off coming down here for ZZX. So the SCV scout really won't be able to get in here and see it. Anything about what's going on other than the barracks at the front. Typical Terran action. Now in TVT, there is something you guys want to take note of is where you place your starting depots. Because say your opponent decides to push across the map with like a 1 1 1. Some tanks in the mix. You know, he does something incredibly cheeky. These, these depots are exposed. I mean, I could sit there and you know, proxy a factory, you know, put a tank over here and you know, use some way of just like using that factory maybe to like look up the ramp and start knocking down your depots. I mean, there are cheeky cheeky options you can do with TVT. But we do have the Reaper expansion or Reaper expand here for Azo. He's going to go ahead and throw down a factory after he calls down his first mule. Reaper does pop out here. We'll be able to get a chase to that SCV. Now, ZZX is going to go ahead and start up with his marine production, which, honestly, by the time that Reaper gets across the map, we'll be able to counter out the Reaper. But it does matter where he positions these marines, so. It's the little things in life. A boy player is going to go ahead and start up that cyclone production. Azo is going to go ahead and get his natural up and running. Wanting to play the macro game once again. Hopefully this game does not go into a long one. Yeah, I, I just love how my bitrate has been all over the place this stream here. Anyway, that Reaper does get in and see everything. Which means you know he should know exactly what is coming his way. Now, ZZX is going to go ahead and move out across the map. I saw how this went last time, however. We do have Cyclones and Marines on the way. A couple more barracks being added on. With that Reaper being dead, Z or Azo has no idea this is coming. So, assuming 
the same thing happens. Like he gets up here and sees, oh, you have army. I probably shouldn't push into this here. But here we go to see exactly what he has in store for us. So see, he shies away from this fight. He does have one extra marine, which could be everything. But two more marines do join the fight here. Cyclone does end up falling on both sides, and the Marines do get cleaned up by Azo, which means Azo does win. Technically, was the first bout there. Tank production is on the map now here for ZZX. As he does go ahead and get his natural expansion up and running. Man, so sleepy. I think I might just take a nap and after this series. And bounce back, you know, and come back and finish up the recap. Which technically the sleep cycle being the way it has been. It's, it's like this is technically five in the morning on the east coast for me right now. So like, I'm like really, really sleepy guys. But here we go, Azo going to go ahead and move out again. This, we saw this type of aggression last time where he did get in here and do quite a bit of damage. He did get the natural expansion down and put his opponent in kind of an awkward scenario. And again, you don't want to fall behind a TVT because TVT is probably the hardest matchup to come back in. Like with PvP, when you're behind, you just dark shrine and generally it works. But we don't have that kind of tech in TVT. We just, unless you go Banshees, there's really none of that you could do to really get back into there. It's like Ghost with a Nuke or you know, something along those lines. Uh, this tank here is going to be able to push us away. There are a total of two tanks sieged up and ready to defend. Which means he's just going to have to back up. Get his stem up and running. As well as some Marines. Get his barracks up and running. They play that macro game. He does have a bunker out here. To defend kind of any kind of a counter aggression. There we go. Now we do have ZZ actually wanting to move out across the map. Now, I like Azo's position a lot more. His RV comp, he does have a tank and he does have some defense set up and ready to go. And it's all just going to come down to whether or not his opponent gets a really good position with his tanks and are able to, you know, just push him back here and get rid of, like, take care of this fight very easily. Scan being thrown down sees exactly what his opponent has. Now he does have the medevac, so he won't exactly have to, you know, waste any scans. Tank getting a first shot off here very, very easily. First tank does fall for ZZX. And just like that, the both tanks are down. Which means it's just bio against a cyclone, a bunker, and a tank. Of Azo. Which means he should be able to hold here as long as he doesn't sacrifice that medevac. Or stack first is cycle of trying to kill a medevac. Yeah, that. Like everything seems so much tinier than what it normally does for me right now. Oh man, it's so tired. But Azo once again is playing the macro game. Going to get his third base up and running. We have two liberators on the production tab. Interesting choice here. To you know, counter some tanks on the map. The flying siege tank up. Oh, check out this SCV man. He's just stuck. Oh, he's not stuck anymore. Instead, he's going to go ahead and build another factory. Uh, it looked like this medevac panel wanted to make a drop, but it did get deflected very, very easily. And once again, we move into that macro phase of the game where it's just TVT macro. It just comes down to who messes up the most here. I mean, we do have the move out coming out here for ZZX. This time with the Liberators in the mix. And at the same time, Azo is going to move down to the low ground here and secure his third base. Now, this third base could have gone either way. So ZZ has to kind of figure out exactly which way it went. Looks like he's going to go ahead and move up the ramp. And he normally wouldn't. These units are on command move. Which means, yep, I guess I have to say, which means he should lose quite a bit here. He does lose a tank and some marines. So that's just going to make this push that much harder. 
is also in range of the siege tank still. But now Azo is also in a really good defensive position here, but he, he can very easily catch a lot of this army. Liberation Zone is gonna he jump, he's just gonna boost forward and land on top of these tanks, and you start to clean up the tanks from right on top of it. Which means Azo should be able to take this fight very, very easily with the tank joining in here. Surprisingly enough, he will do just that. Once again, he's just going to back up and back her up once again. Do have Vikings finally joining in to make sure to counter out the Liberators. We get Macro TVT, guys. This, this is what it is. I really wish I had a co-cast right now. My voice is killing me. He's at work yet, so he's playing Heroes of the Storm. Alright, Azo going to go ahead and take a fourth up here on this high round. Let's say, you know, get that macro game up even more. Whereas ZZX is just now getting his third. Now, upgrades are basically even. The only thing we're missing is that plus one combat shield for ZZX, which is on the production tab now. Azizi is just trying to find some damage, right? He just wants to find a really good position here to take a fight. And that's basically what it comes down to in TVT. It's just where you position your tanks. You know, where you position your liberators here. What kind of air control you have. But the moment these liberators siege up is when the Vikings just swoop in and pick them off. And now this move out here from ZZ is actually a really good position because he does is able to bypass the army of Azo who is sieged up at the front. He is just going to scan and wait for a few of these marines to pass. Now this might actually be it here if he moves in because there's no army on the map here for him back home. But he does siege up on the ramp here which does lock out Azo from defending his natural. Really good position here. Coming out of ZZ X. Yeah, there's might actually get the natural base. As you say that, the Vikings come in here and start to clean up his liberators, which means he can just pick up their units and boost right in here. Again, just showing why medevacs are also still important in TVT. Does allow the mobility of being able to pick up and just move your army. He saves everything. He even saves the natural there. Only loses a refinery. Now he's just going to go ahead and move out. This might actually... Oh, wow, this Dune Drop. Going to come in the back here, I imagine. And ZZ has no idea this is actually heading his way right now. There's a central tower being thrown down. And one thing I will do with TVT personally is I'll just line walls with nothing but missile turrets. So like, I'll have like three missile turrets in this area right through here alone. But Azo going to go ahead and move up here to the third base of his opponent. Which did just finish up a planetary. Which means it will be kind of a lot harder to bust his position. Anyway, Azo going to go ahead and just back on up here. He wants to back on up, you know, just keep this army alive. He's just going to kind of move this army around of his opponent. So that way he can find a way in. And now it's out of position. He's just going to be able to boost right on by. And just take a really good position here. And now his opponent might actually not catch this at times. It's just going to fly right up to the main. The tanks aren't sieged up here in the main. The Vikings are going to catch this. Here we go. He is just going to start to unload. He's got to get rid of the tanks here. He's also got a watcher position for the tanks on the low ground. And Azo, this really isn't where you want to be, mate. And he does lose all of his tanks, all of his units there on the low ground. He is enjoying a base lead, but he really didn't find any damage there. So now his army supply is literally nothing but these medevacs. And as he gets on out of here, he's just going to find a way to you know, deal with these tank counts. Now, Tutu is on the way for his grounded units. More Vikings on the production tab. 
It looks like ZZ is just going to go ahead and move out as well. He wants to push out and try and find some damage. I mean, why not? You're kind of enjoying a good fleet here in the army supply. It probably does take a fifth base. So, I mean, you definitely could go ahead and move up here and snipe out this fifth base before it's even done. Rather than trying to break the front, which he is about to try and do. Nope, he's just going to say, okay, no, mate, I'm just going to go around again. Worked kind of well last time, but it's kind of a micro mistake on ZZX's part to try and actually kill off the natural. But this fifth base will end up falling. It is going to have to be canceled. There we go. He's just going to go ahead and move in. Now, Azo has got to reposition himself up this ramp here. Before his tanks get siege up, it'd be very nice to see him to stim in here and catch these tanks. But he will do just that. That's a really devastating blow there to lose all these tanks on the other side of the map like that. Azo just immediately throws out a scan and he goes, okay, you know what? I might just be able to go for it here. He does pick up. His opponent does see him pick up, which... When your opponent is just building army, I mean, you might as well just go for it. Because if it's not out there to defend, a doom drop is probably the best thing ever. So you did catch the truck your opponent's army out there trying to be cheeky to find some damage, which he did cancel out of 5th base, but... This is not going to be enough to really pull him back into this game. See, Bezo goes for the Doom Drop in the main once again. Looks like that is his plan. He is just trying to find a way to break his opponent here now and you know, just finish his game off as his Doom Drop does kind of hang out up here around the, door, the top. I think he's just getting a bit of macro going here. What are you up to? Okay, expanding to the south. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, expand to the north because he does this. Oh, it's been denied once. He might as well expand to the south. His opponent's actually looking for it. Yes, yeah, he's actually looking for that expansion. And just like mechanized hit squad is going to come in here. Start to play knock knock on his base. Four battle cruisers are on the production tab. Miss that transition, like I said, falling asleep. These tanks are going to get cleaned up by Azo, and this army is in position here just to kind of boost on in. But now, the awkward situation has arrived. Your opponent does know you scan, and you're going to go for it. But look at all the Vikings here. These tanks are just going to be able to siege up immediately and start to clean up this army. It's just not going to be enough here for Azo to be able to just push through this. But now that does free up even more army supply for Azo and his massive bank here just to go ahead and continue his battle cruiser transition. Again, TVT reaching a 16 minute mark. Both players just playing that macro game. But again, Azo just continues to chip away his opponent, you know, to find that damage that is going to keep pushing himself forward. But here we go. Moving out once again is ZZX. He does have a bit more of a Viking count here, so he will be able to answer a lot of this army. Or this battle cruiser transition. A lot of idle SCVs in the main base. Should probably go ahead and at least long distance mine from somewhere. Scan being thrown down here to see exactly where his opponent is positioned. Again, these siege tanks are already having a line of sight. Going to be able to do some damage to his tanks here. Be up the vast majority of this army. And the army coming in from behind very awkwardly. But now here's the kicker. The battle cruisers. That are fully operational battle cruisers. He's going to go ahead and move out here and start to pick off the army. Of ZZ on the ground. He's just going to tap out because he just doesn't have an answer for the battle cruisers. I mean, he does have a bank which he just start to build Vikings and counter it out. But outside that, he just didn't have an answer that. And Azo does secure himself a 2-0 victory.